going live. <coughs> we are live. Welcome to Worldwide Slot Car Chat on Zoom, number 205. I'm your host, Greg Gow. The gang is all here with Tony and John and Rocco and Paul and Yuna and Wayne and Don and Mike and Dennis and Rocco and Courtney and Jeremy and Chris and another John and all the Johns. Let's talk slot cars. Uh, people were already showing things before we started, but if they have anything they want to show again or show anew, please raise your virtual hand or wave your real hands in front of the camera and I'll try not to forget you. Um, there we go, there's a hand. And uh, Mr. Tony P, make sure you turn your radio off or down because it was interrupting us earlier, which is why I had to mute you. Uh, and I've got pictures of the track, Greg, but I'm going to have to send them to you to show. Go ahead. All right. And while we're waiting for that, I'll let Mike go. Are you ready, Mike? Uh, yeah, I am. I got the new Porsche. Oh. With, I don't know if you can see it. Upside down logo. Upside down Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> heard about that. Uh, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty nice car. Um, not terribly, terribly quick. I was very surprised when I did it on analog. It's 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 okay, but the the torque band is very up high. You have to the motor pulls a lot of amps. I can tell. Um, so probably in the future, I'm going to swap this motor out for a uh, comparable one to my other LMPs, which would be the the slotted motor. The standard yellow slotted motor, um, but uh, it's a bit on the heavy side, not terrible. Um, the guide lead is longer than on the Audi R18 LMP, uh, the e-tron, the one that comes with four-wheel drive, but mine is disconnected. Um, but it's it's uh, it's about oh right now about three quarters to a second slower than most of my other LMPs, but oh, wow. um, a little fettling, it'll, it'll come around. I think I'm also going to cut some of these slots out for the, it's got a lot of places to cut the slot to uh, flexible up the chassis. And I'm going to try, you know, a little bit at a time with those and see how it goes because my track generally requires a fairly flexible chassis. It already has suspension in it. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of using a single point pod rather than the dual point pod that comes with it. It uh, provides for both positions. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful car. Um, well, well done, except for the upside down Porsche, but other than that, it's great. So we'll see. I'm excited about it and uh, makes me want to, uh, find the find somebody to pr print the SCG uh, body so it's a little bit lighter and then I'll have at least two of the hypercars to work with. So that's all I got. Wet kit? No, that was the first of the liveried cars. Oh, it's, okay. Yeah, the, the, the ones that, um, that they did the, the livery on. I'm not that good a painter and and it's a pretty complicated livery for that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'll probably end up with all three of them. The, the, so did you buy uh, that in the States? Yeah. Yeah, LED well, hobbies. It's, it's, it's not available in, here, in the UK. Really? I was looking for it, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice car. I, uh, I like it at all. I'm not, I'm not so sure I would have done the, as an engineer, done the... Uh, the separate body piece quite so much um, or given some provision to keep the front piece a little more solid, you know, a, a, just a, a flat piece of plastic along the bottom would not deter from the, the looks of it, um, but would strengthen the front of the body quite a bit because it's pretty, pretty floppy. Uh, it's mounted fairly far forward and the, um, the brake point, you can see, if you look, there's a, uh, a 
line that goes across. You can see where the line is there. That's the only mounting point. The rest of the white portion of it is not mounted to the center at all. So that leaves it a little floppy and a little uh, get a good would could get easily damaged. So that would be a, a negative from it. But um, all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with it. It uh, it goes pretty nice, and uh, I'm not generally happy with the way scale autos uh, handle on my track. So I have to really work at them uh, to get them to work. They'd probably be better off. You know, because the the chassis I think are a little bit too stiff for my track. Um, it would probably work better on a wood track or a, maybe a little longer, more sweeping curve track than mine. So that's it. All righty, thank you very much for sharing. And sure. Tony, you are next, or go ahead. This arrived this morning. Oh, the monster. Three. That's nice, that. Who's that guy? Is he the driver? No, that's, that's who it's in memory of. That's... Um, Noviello. Salvatore. Noviello. Salvatore Noviello. A nice looking motor, yeah. Black and gold. Yeah, one, and, and, that's the only one I got today. Oh, no, and it's our issue that one every once a year, you know, about on the anniversary of his unfortunate demise. I can't do it. To complain about a new, a new NSR car. All right, thanks, Tony. Anybody else got any show and tell? Did you send those pictures over, Paul? No, it's just crashed my phone. <laughs> I feel you. All righty, I'll do a quick one, and I will preface this by um, I am not a rivet counter. I have no problem with fantasy liveries, as most of you already know. If you are a person unlike me, you may need to avert your eyes. Uh, my friend in the club did his best job on my uh, NSR Formula 22, he ordered the decals for the livery we wanted to do, but they came in the 124th scale rather than the 132nd scale. <laughs> so he worked his magic on, the, on what he had available. And uh, the following is the result of that, which I am perfectly happy with. Uh, even more surprising is uh, these are peel and stick. These are not the water slide. Oh, really? Uh, and when I saw it in person, I thought they were water slide. The, this, these were applied so well and so cleanly. I Very nice. Slide. Yeah. So now that's the ones from CG Smart Cars. Or? No, he got them from um, Pato's. From Pato's, okay. <clears throat> And it took forever, so he didn't even didn't get it done until last week. He had ordered them like a month ago. Yeah, it uh, takes time to get them from Australia. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. And then the wrong size. So he, he did what he could. I'm happy. Uh, this was actually taken before he added a, a few more yellow details. He, he took some scrap and, and put a little bit more yellow in this area on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I think it's a great looking car. It looks great going around the track. You need a disclaimer underneath it that says this is not a toy for children because you're advertising tobacco, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not selling it, so I'm fine. <laughs> How do they run? They, they run they, okay. Yeah, they run like you'd expect an open wheeler NSR to run. You know, they, they're they run not like quite, NSR. They're and not then, quite as fast as the 86, 89 versions because the, 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 because of the big wheels and tires and the fact that the motor sits a, a, a fair bit further forward in the car. But uh, they run pretty nice for what they are. If you ran them yeah, together as a, as, a, as a group, it would be a nice class. Yeah, and it's pretty much all NSR Formula 22s. We're not doing other brands. Yeah. I've nice. done mine as a yellow body. I sprayed the wings Renault yellow, and I've done it as a camel. 
Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, one of the guys, one of the other guys likes camel a lot because they're they're mostly yellow. So I usually don't do camel up because it's there's not enough blue. <laughs> yeah. Well, my one got tra- you know my my Sonico one I was absolutely trashed at East Devon and I thought I'm not I'm not gonna do another one because they don't if I do something nice, they just deliberately dry through. If you come out, they will dry through your car. And they was getting so so it was getting so battered, I thought, no, I'll do this one. And I got those from uh Alatia decals. That's a lot. And I'd done the same thing. I ordered one forty third scale instead of one thirty second. So I had to order two sets of decals to uh to to do that one. Yeah. Well, but that, that that runs really, really well. It's it's it is good. It's a good car. Yeah, and and like I was saying, we don't run any other performance open wheelers. So we don't have the the eighties the eighties NSRs to compare to or the Polycar yet. This is pretty much our first performance class open wheeler series. Uh, and yeah, it's going nice. We like them. You got you have to be careful sometimes though, because the ass will want to come come round in front oh, of yeah. you. There was <laughs> there was lots of voluntary blue flagging happen on our on our Monday race because you just do not. Yeah, I saw that. You do not want any tussling with these things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're long as well. Yeah, they're they're tricky. So it was like, remember not to let somebody pass in a turn because you, that's the same as crashing into them, pretty much. Wait for. So what they like on your plastic track? Because the one, the only time I've driven them is on two is on two wooden tracks. That's my track and East Devons, and they are. It is a lovely car to drive. Uh, the first race we had was um, on plastic track, and I felt that they run just as well as any other NSR on plastic track. Most of our most of our plastic tracks are rubber only, anyways. So yeah. you know we generally run fairly soft rubber tires, so they're all fairly well suited to to the plastic that we run on. Did you uh, use the NSR tires? Yeah, we use the stock tires. So whatever's on them, we just glued and trued them. That's pretty much mm-hmm. the spec as that car. Glued and true tires. Uh, I think a small amount of ballast was allowed, like up to five grams or something like that. I didn't put any in mine. I don't feel like it. Really mm-hmm. um, maybe I will at some point, but so far, mainly I just need to properly oil my tires because uh, last week I, I didn't have the car in my possession, so <laughs> I pretty much just got to the track and, and you know did the did the lighter fluid, lighter fluid thing. <laughs> I should have gone ahead and put oil on them just for a few minutes anyways, but. Did you move the screws on the motor yeah. part? I did that when we were talking about it. <laughs> Sat here <laughs> after I got that suggestion from you guys. And I said, and I told everybody else about that too last week. I said, hey, you know, do this. If you're having performance issues, maybe that'll help. And some of the guys did and some of the guys didn't. But yeah, that's good. It's a good series so far. Alrighty, thank you for all the questions and whatnot. And Dennis, are you ready? Yep. Go for it. Uh, these have just arrived and oh, it's come out. Nice. Very this nice. is the BRMP one fifty three, um, as as uh, driven at in South Africa beginning in nineteen seventy by Pedro Rodriguez. Uh, Again, my camera is not really focusing particularly well, but uh, it's, uh, as always with Polycar, very pretty car, uh, lots of lovely detail, and um, I haven't run it yet. It's uh, just been sitting on my bench uh, because, of course, it was only released on Friday, I think. Um, but, yeah, very, very, very nice and uh, up to their normal, I think, up to their normal quality. I just have to uh, uh, spend a bit of time putting some stickier tires on the back and uh, giving it a tune-up. And uh, within a couple of weeks, I'll be able to report on how it goes. I doubt I'll be able to do anything on it this week. Uh, but, yeah, that's the, the latest from Polycar. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's that's very nice. pretty, isn't it? They've done yeah. a really nice job on it. I mean, yeah. the, the, dri- the drivers are all a little sort of... Um, I don't know, pigeon chested maybe. 
sort of puffed out <laughs> chests and things to clear the motor. Uh, and I'm not sure that the, the color or the or the detail of the straps is really right for a 1970 car. No. Um, but um, in general, it's very, very nice. I've, I've been buying them to um, because on the pit lane, I'm having all the teams going through. And mm -hmm. I've been getting, I've been getting them. I've got the Lotus. I've got the, um, oh, the, B, the BRM. I've got the, yeah. uh, the, um, oh, I can't think now, the STP. March. Oh, the March. Mm -hmm. And the, and the Yock and Rint one at the moment. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have them sitting in there with a congregation of drivers all talk. And they used to talk in the old days. They, they wouldn't, they just mingle, wouldn't they? Yeah. So I thought anyway, so, yeah, that's, bits. that's me for now. Dennis, what tires do you generally use on those? Well, I'll go for the uh, the the tire size at the back is a is a slotted one two one nine. Um so I have some F twenty two tires in that size and so I'll use them along with the uh along with the aluminum um uh, wheels. aftermarket wheels and I'll machine a machine a groove in the middle and put some foam under them as I always do but uh, so there's an F22 tire that fits nicely and is the same size so that's what I'll use yeah, 219 1219 yeah oh 1219 okay 1219 all right thank you Dennis yeah it's mm -hmm. nice because uh, it uh, it goes with the other BRM uh, basically, the car is not a lot different apart from the nose detail. I think the rest of the pieces are very similar. Um, the interesting part is that uh, Pedro Rodriguez actually won the South African Grand Prix a couple of years prior to this, or three years prior to the to when this car came out, um, which we were all kind of uh, bummed with because the local hero, John Love, had been in the lead of that 67 Grand Prix. Uh, all the way to about two laps before the end uh, when he uh, had to come in for a splash and dash. Didn't have enough fuel. And uh, Pedro won it in a Cooper, BR a Cooper Maserati. And they had taken most of the nose off. So it had it had a radiator opening at the front <laughs> that, was, that looked like the mouth of a whale. It was so big. Because, of course, January 1st in South Africa, is the height of summer and uh, you're at 6,000 feet and it's as hot as all heck. And uh, a lot of the cars in 67, when they were only a year into the new formula of this new three liter formula. And so a lot of the cars fell by the wayside. There was a lot of, um, uh, a lot of reliability problems still in those days. I've got the, um, you know, Colin Spark was selling the BRM transporter. I think it's the metal yeah, art one. Yeah. I've got that. Oh, nice. And I'm going to, I'm gonna, behind the pit lane, I'm just going to stick that there and I'm going to have one of, the, yeah. one of them rolling off it. Cool. Okay. That's me for now. All right. Thank you, Dennis. And Mr. Weber, are you ready? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I was going to ask Dennis if that Cooper Maserati, was that one of the uh, dark blue ones with two white stripes? That, that Pedro Actually, drove? no, it was the works car. So it was green. Uh, with the oh, okay. with the, the longitudinal stripes, not the Rob Walker one with the with the um, the blue ones with the cross yeah, stripes. I, you're right. I'd I'd gotten them confused. It's been a long time since I've seen a color photo of a Rob Walker. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. uh, okay. So this the image I'm showing here uh, has something to do with uh, with what I'm doing. Uh, that is. And Alfa Romeo, 1939, 8C, 2900, 2900 CC. I think it was a straight eight, but it might have been a straight six. I'm not sure. 2900 CCs, two superchargers. Um, this particular uh, car in a coupe form, well, not this particular car, but a car like this in coupe form, one Le Mans that year in uh, oh, I guess it was 1938. 
because Bugatti won it in 37 and 39. So uh, uh, this, this, these are photographs of a car that's in the Simeon Museum in Philadelphia. And uh, obviously the front side, the other side. And unfortunately, I'd seen this article shortly before an item came up for sale on eBay and uh, the die was cast, as they say. Mm -hmm. Some fella says he was selling a collection of slot cars from a fella who stopped racing slot cars next to his next to his train layout uh, in some place in Pennsylvania. And he stopped. He stopped racing slot cars in 1965. And they put all these, yeah, they had a bunch of stuff uh, for sale on eBay and they put them all away. The, the fellow put, a, put this stuff away in a drawer or something until fairly recently he passed and his wife passed it on to the fellow that was selling it on eBay. Anyway, this is a 132nd scale body of, of that uh, cast in resin of that same, alpha. theoretically, the same Alpha HC2900. So that's going to be a great project. Mm -hmm. uh, Pretty car. They are. They're gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful, in, in my humble opinion. And then also this uh, another re recent acquisition is good old uh, Parmalat Brabham BT46. Uh, John Watson in the driver's seat, and uh, it's a Skelectric, but I've always been fascinated that, by the design of cars, uh, and uh, that's pretty much all. I love your T-shirt. Where'd you get your T-shirt from? Electric Dreams. Somebody found the Cooper. <laughs> Yeah, 19, yeah, 1967 South Africa. Yeah, see what Great. I mean? But yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, this was that great. <laughs> it is an ugly mother, that thing, really. <laughs> but so, so, sounded yeah. great, though. I reckon yeah. it worked. <laughs> and that and that engine, that Maserati, it was a three liter yeah. V twelve. It was huge. Right. But two thirds of the length of the car, for God's sake, it was just and, and heavy. Yeah, not quite as bad as the BRM H sixteen, but uh, close. Uh, Some of Honda's early V twelves were pretty heavy too. Uh -huh. I'm, gonna make you, I'm gonna make you stand up and and pull your shirt so we can see the full yeah. print there. A slash. I love that. <laughs> yeah, the, my, the slot uh, car. The slot awesome. car is the uh, Porsche 917 that won Le Mans in 1970. Yeah, the NSR version. I don't. Yeah. I don't know which. Uh, it's a sidewinder. Yeah, it's so, the NSR. Yeah, and uh, Mar Marco and um, what was his name? Not Carlos, the guy before Carlos. I'll think of it now. Uh, they they set that up and did it all and did all the graphics in house. Um, yeah, just commenting on how quickly people yell "Marshall." Right? The car <laughs> the car has not even hit the ground yet, and they are yelling already. Yep. <laughs> did they do me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the other yeah. blue. No. <laughs> When when they start that with me, I pick it up and I say, "No, but it's yellow. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's red." No, sorry, I meant green. Actually, I, I, I was in blue lane last, but I'm in green now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, John and Jeremy. Are you ready? Yeah. So this is kind of a show and tell. Something I just discovered. So ever since I've been racing when I hold the control of the plastic controller, if you're doing laps, my hand always gets sweaty and it's just like, ugh, it gets gross. So I was, when I started, I would cut my kid's baby socks off and the, the hose part of it and stick it on there. And it was stupid. Anyway, I don't know what, what happened, but 
a guy at our club told, hey, why don't you try this trick? So uh, what I did was I got some grip tape for a racquetball thing, and it's moisture wicking, and it's on there, and it doesn't interfere with my trigger. So if you have the same problem as me, it's like $2 for grip tape, uh, whatever that stuff is, and mm. no more sweaty grip control. Anyway, it's going to change my life. I'm winning out outright for the rest of the season now. <laughs> I can feel it. That, that anyway, it took cool. me, I mean, that's like 15 years now, and I, I just realized, oh, yeah, why don't I just use some racquetball grip on it? Well, I've known well, about yeah. grip tape, but I didn't know that it was moisture wicking. That, well, I mean, if you go on Amazon, you're going to look for the moisture wicking one that's made of cotton. You know, they have different types. And I'm sure every pro player has different types, but yep. we used the one that you used to wrap around your handlebars on your on your push bikes. Yep. Yeah. Great suggestion. I think I'll look into that. So why are they called push bikes? <laughs> because uh, they ain't got a motor in them. They're not a yeah. motorbike. Because <laughs> you use your pedals to push yourself yeah, along. Yeah. Pushing yourself. Yeah, I, I just rode mine seventy six k yesterday. So that's this stuff is great. I actually there you uh, go. Yeah, that's the stuff. This is for uh, tennis rackets. I also also use this on hockey sticks as well. Works works great. Yeah. Cut you cut it in half. It's enough for one control. You can do two controllers with one roll usually. Yeah, I did anyway. Yeah. yeah, when I when I used to play tennis down south, I used to go through these like. Sun, oh, I've got crates of this Especially stuff. if you're like, if you race outside, like in a garage and it's humid and so it's just like, and your controller gets warm anyway when you're doing laps. So it's, it gets messy. <clears throat> Looks like I came to the right room for this. Anything else you guys need? <laughs> Might as well just hang out there. Yeah. A nose chin for a 904. <laughs> yeah. When my wife asks, what do we want for dinner? What's the appropriate response? Because I can tell her what she doesn't want. And that'll be the first thing that I mention. What but, what brand? Monogram, Palmer. Monogram. Yeah, don't. Uh, you're, you're you're poking a bear with a stick here, son. Oh, sharp. <laughs> Monogram. <laughs> it's got to be a 1964 model, though. Can't be any later or <laughs> earlier. Yeah. You want me to read the box for you? He keeps talking <laughs> the price up. God. <laughs> oh dear, I love you, John. Bastard. <laughs> right. Well, I think you take a piece and mold you one and then. Yeah, why don't you? More. There you go, John. How much money have you got on you right now? Enough. He said money is no object earlier. Plenty. Uh, empty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like show and tell is done unless I. Unless anybody wants to wave their hands or or simply speak, uh, up. I got one more little thing for uh, it's actually for Paul. Uh, let me show him. I found these. Uh, first things first. Uh, right now, I can only find two of those screws. Yeah, the little brass ones with the big heads. But that's yeah. the one you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then as far as the inserts are concerned, I've got four that are loose, but I've got a whole bunch of broken um, posts that all have inserts in them. I can pull some of those inserts out for yeah, you too, if you if like. Yeah, you would, please. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Thank you. All uh, right. Just pop me, me your... I'll get me, I'll get me uh, my grandson. He's teething. I'll get him to break them out. <laughs> uh, just pop me your, your mailing address. Uh, all right. On, a, on Facebook or an email or somewhere. Yeah, I'll do, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it on Messenger. Okay, great. Thank you, Greg. Yep. <clears throat> All righty, moving on. Club Corner, if you got any racing you want to talk about, past, present, or future. Uh, yeah, Mike, I'm going to do mine real quick. Uh, you Go might ahead. Seen, might have seen the, the, the video I posted yesterday yep. of the single heat that we ran at Pat's. And like I was talking about, earlier when we were talking about the car, I, I like them and, and I, I enjoy the challenge of um, keeping tires away from other tires. <laughs> Not that it didn't bite me in the in the butt a couple of times, and, or everybody, in fact. Ended up middle of the pack. Not entirely surprising since I was, since I got a couple of really early offs and we raced Crash and Burn. But yeah, I think it's going to be a good series. Looking forward to continuing that. That's for the, the Formula 22, right? Yeah, the NSR Formula 22. Yep. 
Uh, all right, short and sweet. Mike, you ready? Um, yeah, I had my birthday no. bash on Monday. We had two races, and I managed to knock both of them off. We had stock cars in one, and uh, we used the 86 to, I guess, 97 uh, because we had both scale auto and NSR Formula Ones. And uh, it was both of them were pretty close within a lap or less. So it was uh, it was an interesting race, and had a good time. So it was a, it was a good birthday for me. So happy birthday! Yeah, happy birthday! Yeah. What's that? Twenty one again? <laughs> no, no, seventy six. <laughs> oh, mine's in eighteen days, and I'm not counting. I've I said to the grandkids, don't want to know it. Don't want to know. <laughs> Over the hill. Yeah. I'm over well the over Egypt. The denial. <laughs> over denial. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mike. And Dewan, you ready to go? I suppose. Uh, I have a club corner of a club race that I actually did not, whoops, I did not get to attend. Flights were over books, and I was sitting on standby and didn't make it, so. Anyway, but I do have the results. It was kind of exciting. It was a new track. Well, not new track. It's a track that hasn't been used by the club in a few years. So for um, Craig Williamson, small, very small um, figure eight track. So it's just kind of bring that up. But uh, I have that. And uh, we were racing two classes. So I'm just going to do a report. Uh, it was passed on by one of the other guys, or actually by um, uh, Stephen Far Jones. So this was uh, the two classes we had was the F1, uh, NSR F1s, and the uh, uh, Regal Slot uh, Group 1s, I think. I can't remember now. And uh, you see that uh, Walter Baines is uh, prevailing this, this mostly this season. He's going like uh, three or four races, if I'm not mistaken, at least. Uh, we won both races at Electric Dreams two weeks ago. But anyway, um, it's a fairly small track, and I'm trying to, uh, somehow my navigation has disappeared again. <laughs> oh, it's not going to let me go that way. Uh, Just nice. click mostly to the right somewhere, and it'll probably click, and it'll probably move. Oh, there it is. Okay, my screen share. Okay, it barely shows to the far right. There it goes. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, and uh, so this is the Revo's um, results. Uh, Kevin Tabucci won that one. And this is the current standings for our club. It keeps track of all the races all season long. And you get order points of uh, up to 20 points for the first uh, 18 places or something to that effect. Uh, I don't know the specifics, but nonetheless, you can see that uh, Walter's uh, currently uh, out distancing most of the field. Well, he's, he's in a nice size lead. And then uh, we have Eddie there a little ways back. He missed a couple of races, though, which are the factors in. And they do drop, uh, I think, your lowest race for each year. That and uh, let me see if I can bring this up. This actually shows. Did it come up? Yeah. The track. Yeah. So this is kind of gives a glimpse of the track. It's an old. Uh... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, in Facebook land. We're at Silver Lake Raceway. It's a far out race on a very fast and tight figure eight track with a little kink in it down there. Craig at the end there is the owner of this place, Stephen in the corner, recording scores, Sean on the end, Walter, Bob Hooley, marshalling going on like crazy. Gets busy over there. Oh, man, it's a there. tight track. 40 seconds left. We got uh, Ward with 50, followed by Red with 48, White 44, and Green is a four. Laps are under three seconds. Five, eight, two, and five.
thought I was stopping it. <laughs> anyway, it is a fast track. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that's uh, just a couple of shares there. Not a stop. It's a bunch of holes. Thank you. Um, I have to refresh your browser to make that video stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm having problems changing that to my browser. Uh, what, I, what I thought was interesting about that track, I saw Eddie's post, and I was and I was looking at the track. Yeah, yeah. Eddie, uh, Eddie did that. It was great. He uh, shared it out there. Stop it. Okay. It, it was interesting that it's a figure eight track with different lane lengths because apparently yeah. apparently the lane uh, spacing changes between the lanes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, so could you could you clarify is each lane just slightly further apart from one another or do they come together and and the, is there any kind of squeezing going on or? No, no real squeezing, but it does change uh, in the in the radii. So they, they change the field. Well, like for example, is is the distance is, between the inside two lanes the same all the way around, and then the difference between two and three, for example, is the same all the way around, but bigger than the distance between one and two. Never mind. <laughs> Anyways, it's a figure eight track with different lane lengths because this lane the lane spacing changes. The lane spacing is not consistent. That's just to make it as simple as that. Yeah. And as you go around the radii, it does increase and, and decrease. Yeah, yep. <laughs> okay. A very cool track for such a tight space either way. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice little challenging track. I would, and the thing is, I was so disappointed because I, I practiced for like two weeks with my cars to start getting pretty confident with them. Didn't get to go. I was very disappointed uh, having been prepped and all that. Uh, I was hoping to kind of move up in my ranks. So, but, next time. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, we'll be at uh, Eddie's next week. Not this weekend, but next weekend. So, all right. Thanks for the report, Dewan. Jim, are you ready? Yep. All right. We've been racing now at Motown for almost two years now. Two years now, uh, Motown is in Modesto, about an hour south of Sacramento. And uh, we typically go down there on Thursday or Friday before a race uh, to practice because the track is open and he has instituted a new policy. So on practice day before a race day, there are no 124 scale cars allowed on the track, which is great because we don't have to dodge them. Uh, nor do we have to worry about them putting any glue down on one specific lane. So it, it's a nice, nice touch, I think, for the uh, racing there. And it, it's become the go-to place now for Northern California. Uh, this is a track. It's We think it's about 40 years old. Uh, Dennis, one of our buddies, I think you know Fred Hood was there last week. And he seems to think the track is around 35 or 40 years old, was in Southern California for quite a while. It's it's very challenging for a little tight little bull bull ring as a as a twenty four scale track. It's it's rather small for our cars. It's perfect, uh, so it's very challenging track and a lot of fun to run on. We've been consistently getting sixteen or so people. Now we didn't have sixteen in every race, uh, but we had sixteen racers there this past Saturday, and now we're racing twice a month, first Saturday and third Sunday with slightly different classes on the two days. So you know, like I said, it's become the go-to place in Northern California because it's an open commercial track. It's not a home track. And the racing has been spectacular. We've definitely got some good competition there. Ian's there on the right next behind Ted Essie with his head in his phone. I'm not sure what he's doing. Probably calling uh, Todd, trying to find out how to go fast up here. Uh, we have four classes on the first Saturday. We run group C and I was able to get a win in that class. The second class was uh, F1, which we allow now NSR as well as scale auto. However, if you run a scale auto, you put got to put an NSR drivetrain in it, both motor and gear ratio. So we're keeping the powertrains consistent between the two. Uh, there you see Braden is the grandson of the owner, and he's starting to get really fast. And it looks like we're going to move him up to the pro class. We have two classes, pro and expert. We run them together, but they're separate podiums. So it looks like Braden's going to be moving up. He's had the fastest lap in the race. So uh, he's going to be moving up pretty soon, we think. And we were giving him a hard time about it on race day. You're now an, a pro. Third class, getting ready for our Revo slot race, was the GT2 race. Good variety of cars, Corvettes, Vipers, Porsches, 
Uh, Marcos is, uh, seem to be the predominant uh, car right now, as well as there's a few McLarens. Um, there's the podium. I got a win in this over Ian and Mark Perkins, also known as Asian Bayesian. Three different marks in the top three, Marcos, McLaren, and uh, Porsche. The Marcos is short, as well as the Porsche. The McLaren is long, but they seem to play nice together on the racetrack, roughly equal in terms of, in terms of overall lap times. Uh, the last class was GT3, which this is kind of this is one of our open classes. We allow changes to chassis, motors, excuse me, chassis, gears, tires, etc. It is uh, very similar to Electric Dreams, though it is a spec drive tray or a spec motor. The 21.4 NSR long cad motor is the only allowed motor. So, if you're running a scale auto car or whatever, you have to put that motor in the car. Try to keep it consistent, not having people have to try different motors to, because we run on different tracks as well. We don't want people having to run a different car um, to go to a small track. We just require the same motor no matter where we go. And that brings us up to what we've got coming up. We've got uh, the rule book for the Western States Regal Slot Race, and the race is in June. We're having a warm up race in May, first Saturday in May where we're going to run both Revo slot classes with qualifying and mains for the Revo slot classes. And GT3 is a round robin support race. So uh, a lot going on and a lot coming up for Motown Raceway. It's really exciting. That's it for me. All righty. Good stuff happening. North what North. are the exact dates in, in um, for the, the race itself, not the warm-up? Uh, it's May 31st, June 1st, and 2nd, oh, Friday, Saturday, okay. Sunday. So the, right. the Friday is the last day in, in uh, May, but the race yeah. is June 1st and 2nd. Oh, thank you. Jim, Jim, can I ask, I think I've asked you this before, I didn't quite understand. How how do they go, who's an amateur, who's a pro? Like what, when you just show up at a, the club, I assume you start out as an amateur? It's very subjective. Yeah, we... we okay. Yeah. If I thought there was like a, a point system or something or... Yeah, no, there, we don't, it, it's just... It's basically in my mind, along with the track owner and, uh, you know, Braden, we're trying to move him up now, but he finished on the podium overall. So that kind of indicates that he might be in the, in the, well, do, the, the move up class. Do they get a handicap or anything when they're an amateur or anything? No, no we, they're, they're, everything's run together. There's no handicap. He just separates out the top three amateurs as opposed to the top three experts. Or, excuse me. We call them pro Pro is the top class. Expert is the lower class. They're kind of odd that you would call pro an expert instead of amateur an expert. But the uh, so now that Braden's starting to finish in the top three overall, it might be time for him to think about moving up. Uh, but he set the fast lap in F1 as well as GT3, I believe. So he's got some fast cars. He's getting better. He's you know he's not a kid. He's he, I think he's sixteen. So, but you know, he's well younger than myself and Mike. So I, I was just thinking it was something like in the Long Beach Pro Am. They used to have like amateur racers, and if you won that, then you had to race with the pros. I thought it was something like that. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like that, but it's very subjective. We don't have a we don't have a All set right. criteria what moves people up. I was thinking if you had like if if you wanted to be more structured about it, you could do something like have everybody run you know 10 laps or one minute or something like that a set number of laps or time and then either and then you're differentiating them by if you do laps then the fastest time for all 10 laps because that would account for d slots and if you do time then the number of laps you know and, and distance on the last lap similarly because you can get a fast lap like we do king of the hill but you can you can string together a good lap and have nine offs in ten laps, right? <laughs> that yep. doesn't mean you should be up with been, the big been there, done that. Yeah. So, but yeah, something like that, and then you know, just just you know, that's that's it. That's you know, plain and simple, uh, inarguable. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess the only argument you could say is. Uh, the marshals were being slow or something, you, can, you know, but blaming the marshals should knock you down anyways. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so we're done with our segments. Does anybody have any topics they'd like to bring up or other things they'd like to talk about or ask about? Floor is open. 
What you got, Tony? I'd like to ask Jim Rose a question. Go for it. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim, you know you print your own uh, deco details. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by details. You know the the, the card the, on the card, printed on the card. Decals. De Decals. Oh, no, I don't do that. I thought you print your own ones. No, that's not me. No. Oh, sorry. I've got it wrong then. I needed someone to find out who ever prints their own uh, details. Yeah, I've done it, but what what do you need to know? How do you print them? Uh, the very first thing you need is a printer, obviously. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got, a, I bought an Epson ink inkjet printer. Okay. Then, then you need to buy the correct decal or decal paper for an inkjet printer. There are, you, you may find it on Amazon, uh, you may find it elsewhere. So if you want to use water slide decals, you buy the right water slide paper that is printable by an inkjet printer. No. And then you find wherever you wherever you want to find the the um, the artwork whether it's copying a photograph or whether it's a, uh, some logo that you've got and you print it on that decal paper, you let it dry, you have to spray it with a, a clear fixative uh, that is usually sold by the same people that make the paper. And then you cut it out and soak the backing off and put it on the same way as you normally would. You can also buy... And is Chris Walker still on here? Oh, yeah. All right. I hope Chris is not listening to this. You can also buy self-stick vinyl, very thin self-stick vinyl that you can print on and then cut it out and peel and stick. Right. I, uh, no I response have... from Chris. No response from Chris. <laughs> He's, he's, I wouldn't. I have. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Using his words wisely. <laughs> now, I want to address a, an error and omission, but first I want to uh, to show Tony. Let's see if I can do it. I do it. It's your backgrounds are messing us up again. Yeah, it's me. It's it's just what I did. Uh, okay. There you go. Try that now. Yeah, this is made by a company in San Francisco called Hayes Paper Company. Hayes. Yeah. And they make, Ink they make it water slide. Water. Yeah, that's good if, stuff. If, if your decal and the background require white, then you have to get white paper. Correct. Because a typical inkjet printer, I think there's only one printer that will print white. So, uh, and that's not most of it. So it's a fairly rare beast. So uh, here's why, and then they also make a make for clear. So, um, and these were about, I think they're about $15 for 20 A4 size sheets. They don't come in letter size. They don't come in, you know, American letter size, just A4 only size that they apparently and I know there are other companies that make it. This is what I have to find. Hayes H A Y E S. It's the manufacturer. Does yours uh, require some kind of fixative spray? That they it, it does, and they say they say you can use any type of clear acrylic. So I uh, yeah, use a Krylon acrylic or something I, like that. I, Works fine. Just don't put it on too thick. Otherwise, yeah. it looks like a sticker. Right, Chris? Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to address was uh, the that out, old Alfa Romeo show. Uh, let's see here. The open version is the, is the body that I have. The closed yeah. version is pretty strange looking. The open version, one uh, millimeter, the millimeter. In, in that same year, uh, 1938, and it actually got like 
five or six of the first five or six places or something. But there was one interlocal here, I think it was a Talbot or something, that managed third and fourth. The rest of them were all these, these alphas were complete. And gorgeous, of course. A lot bigger than you'd expect, too. Yeah, big, big, big long, car, big car. Things. That's so, all right. So you, yeah, there you go. You got something here. Yep, you. Key. You yeah, I, I, I understand there might be somebody who's looking for the uh, front under tray of a 904 monogram. <laughs> uh, well, there's the first, uh, the first pour. <laughs> So it's 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 done, and I've got a whole bunch of other stuff that's waiting for rubber. So uh, I don't know if you find out if anybody wants one. Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I also got this with the lights in there, so you don't have to get the extra chrome lights that you're going to need. I love you so much. I love <laughs> you. Yeah? yeah. Where do you see the invoice? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Hold on a minute, uh, John. Just keep your voice down a minute, because the missus is in the kitchen, and she'll probably hear how much you're going to charge me. Pound of flesh, buddy. It's a Porsche <laughs> port. It's got to be at least 500 bucks. Yeah, it, uh, actually, it's not, it, should, it, it should cast quite nicely, actually. It's, really it's not nice. going to be money. It's going to be something. That... <laughs> oh, that's a good... Now, there's a thought. You're going to have to do a favor for me in the future. Do you, uh, do you, I, do you, I was you, saying we're looking for a piece of a German car. Well, you know, this is it. This is what we have. Uh, <laughs> let me just ask Sam Pino if he can deliver it for you. <laughs> I'm going to wake up with a horse's head in my bed, aren't I? <laughs> Actually, you'll, you'll end up with half of a German car in your bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go. Oh, nice. well, I can't believe how quick you bloody done that. I can't. Yeah, well, it's, hey. It's uh, it's all about learning from your your offspring. It's quicker than a 3D print. That's what he does. Yeah. Oh look, don't now look. I this is the first time I've been on here for ages. Do not mention 3D printers to me. All right. <laughs> How's that 3D printer working out for you? <laughs> oh bollocks! Have you got any print printing on that printer yet, Paul? Yeah, what? of course I have. I've, I've printed myself new Porsche front ends. That's why I've got John doing them. <laughs> well, I, that's an interesting point, though. Like, how long would it take to build the file for this versus actually just making a plug like this? That's why you have the part. It's easy to make the plug, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, three, that 3D that printer, is print is where it's, it's got about an inch of dust on it now, so it's, it's working fine. Mm hmm it's still undergoing its extended shelf life test, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just testing how long it has stay for before it has to be warmed up. Well, well the, the good news is that if you ever use it, it'll be vintage. Yeah. Maybe I should have left it in, in kit for me. It would have been worth more money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's all right. In the box. all right. All right. All right. Wayne, what you got? Uh, am I muted? No. There's two ways on one, but not the other. So that's good. That's what we want. Yeah, I've the uh, I've tried to get the audio right this time. I'm going to do. I'm going racing this weekend, and um, it's a digital disc race. Where is my share buttons? Okay, this is the car. Anyone recognise? You should do. Scale electric something. It's a scale electric McLaren. And it is. That's what it is. So this is the Disca GT4 category. It's obviously got the oxygen chip in there. There is a spec motor that came from Pendle Slot Racing. It's called an AC6, and it's a 20,000 RPM. Scale electric clone, double shafted. And um, the car, apart from the, oh, the rear tire is a BRM F22 compound, which will be a handout on the day. But that is on the correct tire, so that I can go there and practice. And yeah, that's that's what the uh, that's what we're doing a three-hour endurance race with two member teams. We've got eight team entered, eight teams entered in this race. I've been there and done this race once before. Um tend to do 
relatively well, but I didn't win. So that's what we're going to go back and try and do this time. I'm also taking a Disco World Endurance Championship category car to do some testing with. There's some things underneath that body that um, are a little bit experimental. So I'm going to take that and see how it runs. Is that is that on the track that's uh, Ninko laid on top of a wood track? or? That's correct, yes. It's, um, it's at Denby Slot Car Club, which is about... 15 miles away from me about 30 minutes drive it's it's my local as, as far as it goes but i can't unfortunately get the time to attend on a fortnight basis anymore i've got children who do sports activities but um yeah it's my local it's where i went for the slot rally uh, recently yeah and it's Ryan, linked to to i'm sorry been, do you want to have a laugh I've been invited to France by Graham Lane, right, to race on his English team. The new, what's it, the BRM GC40 is just coming out where well, they're getting given them. And that's that's all um, digital. And I said to him, I've never raced digital before. He said, oh, that'd be all right. Ah. I'm going to, um, I'm going to Belgium in June, do a 24-hour race. Yeah, this is what this is. 24 yeah. hours of race in France, but never, ever done digital racing before in my life. So, What's, what's that event then, Paul? What I is don't that? Know. Um, I'll tell you. Um, if it's in France, I'm, I'm wondering if it's the Davic Digital. Um, Not Oxygen. If they, they, they have their own whole digital thing going on that we pretty much never hear anything about. Hmm. It's, I'll tell you, I don't know, it's Graham's. Um, it's digital, I mean, it's digital, it, it's just different, you know, and, it, and it's, it's, uh, it's like, it's very proprietary. It's not just in slot car shops. It's, it's an older system, actually. It's been around longer than oxygen and stuff. I don't know everything about it, but it, 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 if it, if it's the system that I'm thinking of, it's the new Vic 24, new Vic 24 hour race, 2024. Yeah. And there's a British team going. Yeah. I'm part of it. <laughs> so, so Nuvik is probably. Uh, I knew. I know somebody was working on enhancing the original Davik. I think it was David Kaya that was doing it. Actually, mm, yeah. Is his name on any of that, David or Slot or uh, Sillage or? Um... I don't. Know. I don't know. It's um. So he set up his own. He set up his own. Um, chat group for the the race um oh god but it is the new gt40 that they're getting yeah and that's the 124 scale car right yeah that's the 124 scale one so hey guys i gotta go so uh thanks for everything see you next week have a good one don't lose too much to buy too many. Oh, no, I've got nothing. I've got no skin in any of the games today, but I want to go watch. So I'll see you later. Okay, mate. It's uh, Champions League. So, um, you know, Paul's, Paul's guys didn't quite manage to beat uh, Bayern last yesterday. And, no, um, only because some dodgy, cheating uh, to ex Tottenham player <laughs> a, took a penalty. <laughs> All right, all right. Go, go yeah, on. who gave the penalty away? All right, guys, see you next week. Bye. Later. Go shit talk at a pub somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and are they doing the car on a handout basis over there, Paul? Yes. Is it a uh, case of uh, arrive as a team and then get your spanners out and start preparing the car? Um, the car's been or the cars are being issued to the teams now. As far as I know, the cars are being issued. Uh, it, well, it's, it's still on its way from China. But um, each team gets issued a car, a lighting system and everything. And whatever goes inside them, I haven't a clue because, as I say, I've never done digital before in my life. 
Um, I don't even have a digital controller. So what do I do about that? Because all mine are true speeds. You all use the same one. Oh, yeah. that's right. Um, but, yeah, and it's... When is it? Have you, so who's building your car? Uh, Graham Lane is. He's the he he used to run um, Shepton uh, Slot Car Club before it moved to Avon. And how many of you are making up the team? Five. Uh, yes, yeah, five of us. That's about the yeah. perfect number. But I'm going to be bricking it because, like I say, I've never ever ever done no yeah GC forty kits. So that's what where's, they are. Where's the race being? What city? France is a big place. <laughs> it's it's new, it's a uh, Rubik new N E U V I C. You know what? There might even be a video on YouTube from an event, a past event of that. Of that, has it got windows behind the drivers? Are they all uh, standing about table high? That's the one. That's it. That is the one. Yeah. Well done, whoever found that. That was great. That's me. It, that should, I believe, that's running Davic, or they might be running the. the oh, they're um, nice long lane changes, aren't they? I've I've got no. They apparently they got showers. They got they got several tracks there. Yeah. Um, but they got a wooden track as well. So I don't know whether to take my um. Go back up to the top. I think I've seen a YouTube video from there. There, look at those little booster seats on the left. You get stadium seating right there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the extinguisher on the wall in case anything goes wrong. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but there, that that is that's coming up in. Oh, oh it's. I can't remember what it is now. It did say, but. But oh, yeah. Okay, so Muvik is, is in Dordogne. Uh, yeah. Which how, is, how are you going? Uh, how are you fly are you flying or driving? No, I've taken a motorhome over. Oh, okay. Go crashing that. <laughs> You're gonna take the missus as well, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. I've I've done the same. I did it for the first time in January. Me and the missus went over to, as you know, went over to Holland and it was good. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, that'd be that'd be the first first test of the motorhome abroad. So, but there you go. I'm just I'm just bricking it, literally bricking it. Because I say I've never don't. ever done digital. Don't all the same rules apply. Don't crash. Find your favourite lane and stay clean and, and stay in it. That's it. You can do it. It's not that hard. Uh, is this the same Graham Edwards that runs the proxy? No, Graham Lane. Graham Lane. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, he's a he's a British expat living in. Well, he was France. in Ireland for a while. He lives in he lives in uh, he lives in France now. He was living right. in Italy. Sold his hotel and everything, and he's now gone to France. Okay. Yeah, the the well. post showing earlier does say that that as of 2022, that club was or that track was running the Davic digital system. So the interesting thing about Davic is the controller you'll have in your hand is very much an analog type controller. Uh, and then there's like a box that that goes to that has whatever electronics necessary to send the, mm -hmm. the appropriate signal to the car. Um, along the I'll, rails? Hmm? Is the signal along the rails? I believe it is. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't have, it's like 10 or 12 cars or something like that it's not it's more than your typical off the shelf digital but not as much as oxygen um but you know if they're using if they're even if they're if they're moving to david's um enhanced topic then i don't i, I know even less <laughs> but like i said i mean the whole the whole that whole digital topic scene is just bizarrely encapsulated in france it's just not we never hear anything about it outside of france all right geography by john weber 
Yeah, the pin drop here, the red pin drop, where my thing is. That's where no. Nubik is. And we have Bordeaux. <laughs> it's over here. Oh, because I know where Bordeaux is. It's on the west coast. I see that. <laughs> here, west coast. <laughs> Just zoom out a little bit so we can see the borders of France. It's about, uh, Nubik oh. is about 30 miles west of uh, Bordeaux. There you go. So a few yeah. hours right out of Paris. <laughs> no, I, I think um, I might go from Plymouth, sail across from Plymouth. Oh, yeah. Going to La Rochelle. Yeah. Take a, take the a geography car. quiz later. <laughs> well, it looks beautiful. Not as beautiful yeah. as Cedar Rapids, Iowa, but still beautiful. <laughs> so you got to host a Digital 24. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'll get right on this. So of course, this place. There was the um, 24 hour in Michigan this past weekend. A cloverleaf in the owner's basement. Is that right? It was, sounds like it he's, was got, a... he's got a better track in his basement than he does at the shop, I heard. That's what it, he's like a general contractor. He has a huge basement, I guess. And that, that they couldn't fit it into cloverleaf. That's hilarious. Well, I, I've got another six hour coming up on mine. Have you? In, yeah, in uh, the 27th and 28th of July. So hopefully I'm trying to get Slotted to sponsor it this year because NSR sponsored it last year. But I have not had no reply from Rick's there yet. Is entry by invitation, Paul? No, you can come down if you want. You, I've, 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 there's only three of us in the team at the moment. If you want to come and be a team member, you're, it's Group C. Um, I'm building the car, so and that's it. You want you want three for six hours, don't you? No, don't matter. More the merrier. Wow. <laughs> that means I, I do less driving. Then I get more more done on the um. Because sadly, Ron Ron's not going to make it this this year. So, um, yeah. And you do that by lane rotation and uh, spending an hour, yeah, in each. Yeah, it was last year. It was forty-five minutes each lane. Yeah, sorry, yeah, forty-five. Yeah, and hopefully, I might even do a twenty-four hour one because all the lights, all the lights now. I can't imagine room. spending twenty-four hour in your garage, mate. Why? It's it's, it's a daunting prospect. <laughs> well, you've been in. How long did you spend in there? Five. <laughs> and did you mind it? <laughs> No, it was cool. It was, it was, it was, I can imagine it getting quite tricky with so many people in there, though. Mm. Well, it'd be interesting. Intimate, shall we call it? <laughs> well, you know, and, and plus the fact you've got the lane around the back where you can just park all the cars. So if you want to have yeah. a crash, and the garret, you know, so, and then I've got a beer fridge that's always full. That sounds great. I can't say put me down right away, but no. we'll see. If you want to come, you know, you, I told you, you're always welcome anytime. Yes, matey. Not to, yes, I'm aware. Thanks for the invitation. That's all right. Am I invited in, anytime I want to come? You, mate, if you get yeah. over here, you yeah, are, yes. are, you are anyone, anyone's welcome. I mean, say Wayne was actually gobsmacked when he, when he came around and brought his boy with him and drove around it. I mean, say he didn't want to go home. Okay, listen, gobsmack is one thing. If he was speechless, I'd be impressed. Well, <laughs> all right. That's true. You might get to find out, John. Keep your eye yeah, on Yeah, you've done a video. Oh, yeah, you've oh, done a video, course. didn't you? I forgot all about that. Uh, yeah, it's um, still in the can, but I, it needs some editing, and I'm not very skilled at that. So uh, one day I'll, I'll find the opportunity and get onto it. I've completely forgotten about that. Oh my god. Did did we say anything naughty on there? Plenty. There's a distinct we... there seems to be a distinct lack of um cars actually going around the track in the footage that I've actually got. I've been reviewed. It's a lot of chat. Well, that, that, that's an excuse for you to come back again and film more footage, especially if you're doing if you come down for the six hour. Six hour. Yeah. I mean, so you don't have to even race if you don't want to. You can just Oh, you could be the, you could be the go-to man to pull it live because I didn't clue how to do that. Yeah, uh -huh. we wouldn't be challenging electric dreams. Let's put it that way. 
<laughs> you can do what I do, just stick the the uh, iPad up there and film it. Yeah. Yeah, you can like you can you can just switch a camera on and press go live stream, can't you? So I've never done yeah. it. Yeah. It's got all it's got all Wi-Fi up there and everything. All the Wi-Fi is in the garage and linked up. Yeah, well, that should be no problem then. All you need is an iPad or a yeah. camera or whatever. Any mobile device with internet, just anything. Phone. Yeah. As long as you've got a good enough um, network connection, fast enough, then yeah, it should, yeah. should work. Well, it's got we'll talk about it add on, and we'll talk about it down the road. Yeah, as I say, you are welcome. You know that any of you lot are welcome. If you come okay, over I'll, here, I'll, you did, I'll, you I'll did attract some pretty good drivers, didn't you? Because when I was over in um, Eindhoven this in January, conversation struck up around the dinner table at um, Saturday evening where we all went to the Chinese, and I overheard this conversation with Simon. You know who Simon is. Yeah. Saying, oh, he's got the, it's this bloke, he's got this massive track, built it in a double garage in the bottom, bottom of his garden. And in the meantime, I'm freaking through my phone like that, finding the odd still picture. And I went, Do you mean that one? <laughs> yeah. He went, How have you been? So, yeah, it, it came up. Yeah. Oh, it's getting, it's getting out there, but it's people want to race on it. Um, but I want to, I would love to do a club. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to do a club, but. At the moment, it's my baby. It's only very rarely I let anyone else on it unless they are invited. And to let total strangers come to my house and run around my track and, well, I don't know. So basically, you're Lord March and it's your Goodwood. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Most of the yeah. clubs that I run with are... are start out as friends and neighbors yeah and then they, and then they invite their friends to come and check it out and, and so it's so it's i mean yeah you might not know everybody immediately before they end up but you basically it's still just a, a you know friends and family kind of situation R rarely does a club like just open its doors to the public yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, with a track like yours, you know, if you're doing like yeah. a home, home track club. I mean, I so say there's so much stuff in there. I mean, so I've got all dinkies on display. I've got all corgis on display. Well, wait, wait a tell you, he's seen a lot. Yeah, but yeah you'd, need to, you'd need to implicitly trust anybody. I just didn't get to my phone. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I mean, so I've got people from other clubs that want to come and race on it. Um, but, yeah, Simon and um, Steve at True Speed Racing, they, they absolutely had a blast on it. They absolutely. And they booked, or pre booked anyway, already for this year. So, what's the space? Pick for the track, Paul? Yeah, I can. I, I'll send it to Greg. <laughs> I, I might still have some old pictures in there. Let me, let me dig some up here. Paul, there we go. It's a it's a, it's a nice wood track with elevation and and yeah, a lot. It's he's, got he's, he's got a bunch of um, cool landscaping. Yeah, and it's still it's still going on. If you're friends with him on Facebook, he regularly posts a picture of what's happened just now and what's happened next. There it is. Let's see if I can get an overall picture here. I'll take one up. Hey, did you did you say you had video of this track? Yes. Yeah. I, I yeah, long, I got my full picture history from from. <laughs> hey, there we go. I knew there was one in there somewhere. That's it. That's, That's it. A long time ago, before you did a whole, so much work. Yeah. Cool. And that blank piece of wood there now features a pit lane, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's painted black now. It's all black. It's um, it's all um, varnished over. On this corner is the is where the control tower and all that fencing is I, I built and done. That's all extended. Um, I'm going where the wind. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll go back to it. Just making sure I got the best one. Yeah, that that is that is um, it's it's a labour of love, um, and it is it is is a laugh. It's as as my as my granddaughter driving. 
How many 3D printed pieces on that track? There's none. <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> There's a, there's a 3D printed bit was on there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. 3D printed the chassis. <laughs> I've done that one. Yeah, I knocked that one out quickly. Going back to the the here we go. Some nice. There you go. Place. That that's the six hour race last year. Everyone used. Really good. Yeah, that's a great track. What's the total length? 125 feet. Ah, nice. <laughs> But there's enough light coming off of those lights now because I've I've I'm running them off of 12 volt that it lights all the lights light up. It's you can you can actually do a 12 hour 24 hour race without putting lights on your cars. <laughs> <laughs> but every building on there that's going on that track is even the pit lanes all going to be lit up. Yeah, beautiful track. Yeah, definitely send me an updated overall picture yeah I'll, I'll 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 take one um later on and send it to you it's even got rabbits and cats on there so track cat on there which is on the new section and um, the corner where maggie smashed my brand new car up is where at the end by the where where it comes around to come back up the straight and under through the tunnel um i put a new tree there and i've got some little britain's rabbits and they're on the track as well. And I've got the actual cameraman that um, was sitting by the side of the... Oh, John, I know what one I'm on about, but he's sitting on there and he's, he's filming. Yeah, that, that was the one from uh, Monaco in 1964, yeah. 65. Yeah. I've got two, I've got two of them, so they're, they're on two separate corners. But the fencing on the new section was a nightmare because I had to do picket fencing and use one one sixteenth square balsa to make the pickets, and oh, it took me forever. And the gates and everything else. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. All right. Anybody else? I'm gonna. You guys are like afraid to. I mean, we can just. Pretend like the live stream is over. Just whatever. I have, one has, right. uh, no I have one. Anybody has anybody got any experience with a magnet downforce machine from a company called? Oh, uh, it won't come to me. <laughs> it's it French, that... I think. Forgive me, no, I can look it up. There's one that Travis did a review of uh, a review of a year or so ago, and it was like it was it was supposed to detect like the the magnet of uh, magnetic field or something like while the motor was on. Oh yeah, I remember that one. That's not the one you're thinking of, though. I don't know. No, um, it's not. This one doesn't run the car. Jeez. I assume you're not talking about the, the Bianchi Specialties one that Jim just reviewed. Well, I, I have looked into that. It's called PRS. And I'll show you. It's, it's I can't. It's, it looks like this. I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that's not going to work. It's called a PRS. If you want to Google it and share it, that'd be great. P like uh, Paul? PRS. Magnetic P bench. P like Paul. Yes, P like Paul. Okay. R like Roger. And S like saliva. Magnetic bench. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought this one just popped up somewhere. I forget. Uh, let me share my screen. It's one I've never come across until I came across the Ed Bianchi. I think it's new. I think this is new. If you look at that, there's nothing unusual about it except for the fact that it's not got that, it's not got a piece of metal that the car clearly pulls onto. Everything's underneath. But he's yeah. picturing it with not only a car on, but just a motor. 
Greg, I just sent you some pictures. So I, I sent a I sent a message to try to reach out to PRS directly uh, via their Facebook first, then via their online store. <laughs> And after I'm trying to ask them a question, one simple question: Can you convert this display to sh uh, show in an English language? Now I should imagine it'd be quite easy to operate in French as it is, but I just wondered whether they could make one in English because I don't know what that word means. But that's going to be south, isn't it? Uh, yeah, maybe that means like average or something. Well, it would be, yeah, I don't know. Clear data and tear are already English. Don't know what the little lights do. And I'd like, I can't find a manual. And, and I've not found a review on it. I've not found, I can find a few different places it's available to purchase. And most of them are out of stock. I think there's one somewhere in stock. No one any experience with it or seen it or, you know, no one knows anyone. What's on that technical sheet? The, there's nothing under it. It's not a link. Oh. That's what I was looking for, a link. Somewhere. And there's no YouTube videos from them or anything? Uh, let's see if that shows it. Yeah, no. Submit your own picture. Ask sure, I'll get right on helping you build your website, guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> I actually think it's quite a nice feature that uh, uh, that a slot it uh, sorry that a slot car uh, retail website has the opportunity for people to put posts underneath this, products. This okay. is the, this is the manual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't even read that. First thing to do is press tear button for a few moments to tear the device and set it to zero. To delete max value, you have to press clear data. Colored lines are just points of reference where to place rear wheels. Open case motors have higher value, less in the ground. <laughs> less is the ground clearance of the car, and higher the read value will be. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. At the same, <laughs> right, way, the same motor, a car with zero offset will have a lower value than a car with a. Well, yeah, because it's closer. <laughs> the Cura is Italian for reading for us. Probably means so read this content. Yeah. So Lettore is Italian, sorry? Wait, that's yeah. a video. Is that a video? No, it's it's just the next no, it's just slash or something. I got that too. Uh, I just sent you some uh, pictures of a couple of videos, Greg. Okay. Yeah, I, I know about the same amount as you do on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is literally all I can find anyway. I can't find a review. I can't find any comments about it anywhere. But I like the fact that a, a store gives you the opportunity to do such as upload your own picture or make comments. If Because then, if, if the stores did do that, then we could collectively um, add the missing data to the products that we sometimes look at and go, okay, so it, you've told me what you've told me, but there's a few more bits of information you haven't that I'd like to know. The real question is, who out there all the ones that apparently were who out there has the ones that apparently have been sold out and yeah. haven't told anybody else about it. Yeah. Maybe he only had a couple prototypes ready. <laughs> right. Perhaps they're on his, still on his 3D printer. Yeah. Which is still on the box. I know. Tony bought them all. <laughs> the situation with the Bianchi one, I did look closer at that after... Um, after Jim's video and um, reached out to Ed via the slot forum and um, his stock level on eBay USA was eventually depleted to zero. It was very, very difficult to find. And in a nutshell, it costs so much to ship from the USA to the UK that it's, an, it's pretty much a non-starter. For what? Which device? The Bianchi. Ed Bianchi scale. It's called a Magnaforce. Yeah. It was in Jim's video, one of one of Jim's recent videos. It's basically just a 3D, 3D printed bracket for a... a Over for a digital a scale. scale. And, yeah. and then he glues the, the, the bar steel or whatever to the scale. 
So it's basically a reverse reading. So it's pulling the pulling the bar up, but not pressing down on the scale. So you're you're pressing up on the scale. So you're getting negative numbers, but it's still numbers. And it's just a comparative thing, just like any other magnet Marshall device. Yeah, uses. yeah. But it's quite inexpensive by comparison to a magnet Marshall. I mean, if you know somebody with a printer, I've got two different. <laughs> yes, you yeah. have. I'm, I'm... All you need is the scale and then take a couple of measurements and then print it out. It's super easy. Anyways, here's Paul's new pictures. That is very cool. And apparently that was the wrong button to click. There we go. There's not enough dirt. <laughs> it's it's clean. a clean track. That's going yeah. out into the pit lane anyway. Do you know what that is? That dirt, that's, that's ash out of our fire. I sibbed it and sibbed it and sibbed it and then rubbed it in to the, and then went over the top of the glue for the grass. Natural wear and tear. Yeah. Is that static grass or? or yeah. Okay, that's Caps, stat I'm going. That's... I'll see you next week. See you later, see you mate. Week. Take care. That's static grass. I mix my own static grass, and that's a different. That's five mil, three mil, two mil, a lot in there. Yeah, it looks it looks very natural. Actually, Paul, are you a, are you a wine drinker at all? Yes. Well, actually, what I do is I uh, actually take corks and use a, a zester, and it, it it's great for making paths. Actually, I, I, I can oh, show right. you. What I do. Yeah, yeah. Ground cork, warm to the touch, soft feel, paths. This is running on automatic. I've got uh, four train controllers, mm -hmm. and um, I just this was just a warm up, just to clear the track. Yep. And that's coming. That's coming under the brick tunnel, up, round, and goes through. The start line is where the gantry is, so that this is coming up the main straight. And it comes round down, comes past the drivers, back round the bottom, and back up the straight. And this section you're looking at now, if you come round that left hand at the top of that hill fast enough, what happens is you approach the, the crest and go down. Momentary loss of acceleration because you've taken the air and you fall back in the slot every time. It's you can the NSRs go airborne. The 908, the, the uh, yeah, the 904, uh, 908, they would go on the six hour. And we were all getting air going down through there, and it comes round, goes down through the um, underneath the bridge, goes round and over, comes back down, and then goes back round. It's like a jump. A little bit. It's just basically a big figure of eight, but it's 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 several um folds in it. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of tight corners, very tight corners, and it's quite a challenge to learn, isn't it, Paul? It took me yeah. quite a while to actually find the fast lap. Yeah. And I didn't quite get to what the guys had done on there, but didn't yeah. expect to because there's only really a little bit of running taking place, but a lot of tire cleaning. But I walked into four cars all doing exactly that when he because he knew I was coming. He says, Oh, don't worry, I'll just turn it on, start cleaning. And when I walked in, there were four cars doing laps. But yeah, it's it's I say it's getting there. It's uh the kids were up there today. I had uh, all three grandkids over today, and it was mayhem up there. So, <laughs> body parts flying everywhere. Uh, one actually hit, hit the tree, and I was gobsmacked. It missed the lamppost and hit the tree. Didn't kill no rabbits, didn't hit the uh, cameraman, but actually hit the tree. How they managed to do that, I, I'm, I'm amazed how they managed to do that. Speaking of magnetic downforce, I have a question. Um, on the brushless motors, 
I've been told that when you apply power to them, you know, basically when you're running the car, they gain magnetic downforce because of the the way the motor works. And then when you let off on the power and are coasting, you lose the magnetic downforce. That's well, what I've been told. Are, the wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me finish. That's what I've been told. I put it on the scale that I have and took the gear off so I can run the motor on the scale. So the motor is just freewheeling. And when I had applied the power, I had zero difference in downforce between full power and no power. So I'm not sure if there's, if the people that I've been told, the people that have told me that you get downforce when the motor is running are not correct, or if it's just the specific motor, or if anybody knows, Yona may know because he's run them and, you know, I've never run them on a magnetic track. So I'm just, I'm just curious. Well, they're making the magnets are in the in the bell, and they are all the way around it, opposing. Right, but those are permanent the, magnets. Permanent the, magnets. The theory yeah. is that when you apply the power to it, the electromagnets, because there's so many, what would we consider poles on that, that it's creating a lot more downforce than a non-brushless motor. But I, I don't know because when I tried it. And I don't think there was anything wrong with my test. I put the motor, I put the car on the downforce meter, took the gear off so I could run the run yeah. the motor while the car was on the meter. And I got X reading with no power applied. And I got the same reading with power applied with the motor spinning fast. And what was your reading? Was it a low reading? It was like, it was like nothing. <laughs> right. Very, very yeah, low. Virtually, virtually no downforce at all. Measure it. My regular, just make sure the meter was reading correctly. I put my regular cards back on it, and I got the same readings as I got on those cards. So the machine is working properly. But I, I'm just kind of at a loss because it, it makes sense that when you apply power with all those coils, it would create magnetic downforce. And with the power off and those coils not activated, it would, it would have less. But I, I just don't know. Hmm. I don't know why that would be. I don't know how um I don't know I don't think I don't think the coils are powerful enough to in, induce uh, an even stronger field from the fixed magnets the permanent magnets. Yeah, I they're wouldn't think so. a lot. That's that's they're what already very strong. I read it on the internet, so it must be true. Of course. Well, they say the earth's flat, then I on the internet. Oh. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hear you. I said they say the earth's flat on the internet. Yeah, well, they say that on the streets. <laughs> well, the, 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 the quote was, don't believe anything you read on the internet. It was signed Abraham Lincoln. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, They're coming. And I, you know, I, I await the day when we get an opportunity to run them. As a digital class, or because if there if there genuinely is very very little downforce, that will open up opportunities for digital cars that don't rely heavily on their ground clearance. Because I in a world twenty four hour by the way that somebody talked about they finished second with a brushless car. They did, didn't they, in the Michigan race? Yeah, yeah, two hundred and forty five laps behind, which is not a lot over twenty four hours. Yeah, same motor, all 24 hours, no problems. Did you know it took them 30 hours to run it because they had more teams than lanes? So they had sit-outs, so you had to run. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't a, it was 24 hours. Each team got 24 hours. Which yeah, they did. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it ran from 10 a.m. to like 3 p.m. Apparently. Just on based on what I saw on the internet. <laughs> so it, yeah, must, be it must be true. <laughs> Jim, I had a question for you. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but uh, I know a while back you mentioned you were doing some research on the MESAC club. Did you ever? Yes. Um, yeah. Are you still pursuing that? Is it something that's been? It's a, It's an ongoing. It's an ongoing project, and there is now a MESAC group on Facebook. That's what I was going to say. I've been you seen that. Them. Yes, I'm following them. I'm very. I've been pretty intrigued about that, especially since it was like not very far from home. And, uh, and I, yeah, it, well, the, 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 the interest that I have, not only in the track and the history of it, but I know, I know what happened to the track and a lot of people don't know the ultimate, right. 
um, end of the track, so to speak. And I wish, oh, I wish Dennis was on because uh, there is one piece of the track still in existence. So just a short straightaway. Is this the one you was on about before, Jim? You could alter the track to do different yeah. races. Yeah, it's from the sixties, late sixties. Yeah, big one, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. So, uh, to, to answer your question, it's an ongoing thing, and trying to figure out how to put a video together to do it justice and tell the story the right way is is tough. Okay. I don't know. So, I up. Uh, this is the. I, I believe that's a recreation that picture there he's yeah, he, he's duplicated the original that's not the original track but it's a yeah. duplicate of the original track yeah, yeah that's just... that's that's a repro yep yeah right. but that piece of track does still exist that's what i like you could go into the pits and come out that's what i wanted to do on mine but i've got such a tight corner coming out of the pit lane the other side of the gantry to go round and then come round on yourself it, it'd be impossible most, to do. Most go of across the, all four lanes most of the color pictures actually that you'll see you actually were used for rusket promotional stuff yeah 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 i know um, that uh uh Gosh, I can't think of his name now. Over at LEB Hobbies, I know he was part of the. Of, um, he, was, he was one of the members of the Nissan Club at one time. Brian, well, the, the guy that the guy that's doing the Facebook group, Victor Ferguson, who's also um, what's the name of his company? He, he makes scale-looking Lexan bodies. True, 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 true scale. True scale. True, true scale. scale. <laughs> he was a member of the original club. So he's kind of trying to keep the the legacy alive. Yeah. What's it called again, Jim? On Facebook, Mesac, M E S A C, and that that's an acronym. I forget what miniature or something. I forget miniature electronic uh, scale car. Oh, jeez. Club. Thank you. Mobile. Thank you. And some of them, I think one or two of the members are now up in Oregon in the uh, involved in the Pelican Park Club in Eugene, Oregon. Yeah. Because it's kind of the same same theory of operation. The cars are all scale looking. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the club, the track up there is just kind of a, a normal 24 scale track. It's decorated, mm -hmm. but it's not this big elaborate six or eight lane changers or variations type of track like the original MESAC track was. Me I think so. Dennis, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, Dennis, uh, Duan, uh, Philippe may know. I, I know Philippe knows about it too. Oh, wow. It's got a beautiful like the old petrol tanker on there as well. Oh, yeah. If you of... Google it, you'll find a couple articles that were done on it that have quite a few pictures. Yeah. I love that, that petrol tanker. <laughs> on another completely different subject, I saw that um, uh, Bill Royal, he had a nice little um, project that he was doing with his uh, cameras. He had some sensors, uh, in my, and this is my assessment of it, which is, may not be 100% accurate, but... Software that he's able to to uh, map out the his layout, and in the software that uh, that you can overlay on the on the layout, different zones that uh, can trigger events. And what he's doing is he's having cameras set up at those different zones. So that as this, as his cars are traveling around, it's like an automated um, uh, selection of uh, camera ang angles as the car's traveling or going through different zones that may trigger the next camera just coming up um, so that you can really follow a car throughout the entire layout. 
So that's a real intriguing concept. He's also trying to put in some type of crash zones that uh, if a car gets into a zone and stays there, that it, uh, it actually um, stops, puts a track call in type of thing. But there's a lot of options like that, but it's this very intriguing concept of uh, trying to automate certain things in the track. Yeah, this, this is probably the best article that I've seen on it. And if you just Google it, it's on Slot Racer on their forums. And it's a whole article, you know, from back in the day about the track, the various variations and the club and everything else. So there's 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 some good articles out there on the Internet. You, you uh, mean you, you don't have that magazine? You I don't have that one. No. You, Do you have it? Oh, God. Or did you cast it out? Did you cast it while we were talking? I yeah. well, that, that I would just scan and copy. Yeah. <laughs> you mean so you got a scanner as well? <laughs> Yeah, but but for paper, not not a three D scanner that you're looking oh, for. Oh right, that's all right. Printer. Yeah. <laughs> What's a three D printer? Those parts aren't ready yet, John. Oh well, uh, the, the first one is yeah, that's getting there. I, well, this is this is actually you, you guys sort of interrupted me doing uh, an episode, so I'm working on the uh, the Ford F one hundred. This is the cab and uh, all the other all the other parts. But rather than bore people to death, you know, because it is. Um, I can do episodes to suicide by. Um, I, I thought I would just, you know, break it up. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dewan, that the stuff that Bill is working on is is really, really impressive. It is, but it's important to remember that it takes an impressive person to do, to do impressive things. <laughs> He's writing all his own programming. Uh, under Python, which is wow. not not commonly used programming anymore, but he's basically writing his own code to do all those things. <laughs> and yeah, he's making it so the the camera, the point of view of whichever camera is is on the car changes where the car, but you know, depending on where the car is. And, He's working on getting crash detection going so that he can ha have automatic track calls when a car crashes. <laughs> I mean, what? maybe you can get him to come on earlier uh, or at some point later and talk about it. He's going to have plenty to show us, isn't he? Judging by what he's putting on Facebook. What is the best camera to get to go on? Because I'd love to put a camera on one of my cars and drive it around the track so you could see. Oh, look, here we go. He's printed one earlier, isn't he? Depends on whether you want to go miniature. Well, I don't, it's, it's, I want something small enough. So, it, it, because don't forget, when you come under that bridge, that tunnel section, it's all right for the scale electrics lorries on the middle two lanes, but anything on the outside, it will smash it to pieces. <laughs> that looks like it's a bloody GoPro, John. No, actually, these are key fob cameras, and I use them all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. You see, this one's number two. And you can actually just paste it or tape it, double side tape on the car, and away you go. A key fob it's camera. Up. Yeah. yeah. Less, than, cool. less than 10 pounds AliExpress, places like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never heard of one. Or, oh, or, or Paul, for, for you, 30 bucks. <laughs> I got one. Plus shipping. Look at that. <laughs> familiar, Greg. That is very familiar. So for, for those of you who've actually watched anything that I've done, my intro with the um, it's a yeah. electric Indy car it was one of these pasted on the rear wing, and it, it does a great job. They're about 720p, aren't they, John? Um, I think I ended up paying like two bucks a piece or something for them. You know, the, the quality of the video, he meant 720p. Oh, 720. Actually, you can get 1080. Well, yeah. I, I've oh, got yeah. some videos of of from a keychain key fob camera on my older YouTube. I have one sitting here. I've had two. They, you know, to get a better quality one. But the real question is, do you just want some cheesy looking video to 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 you know see what it might look like, or do you want quality footage? I want clear. Then proper. you're gonna need a GoPro. Because ah, those key fob cameras are okay, but the, the, even the, even though it says it's got some resolution, 
that doesn't mean it's good quality. <laughs> no, it's about lens and sensor, isn't it? Yeah, lens sensor, the right speed of the of the memory card, and all. it's it's they're cheap for a reason. They function. They give they give passable video, especially if you're just going to use it at, in like one, you know, quarter second, you know, fifteen frame okay. bits for a, for a video intro. But if you want to see what your track looks like from the point of view of the driver of a car That's going around well. your track, and you want to enjoy watching the video from start to finish, then you want a high quality. It doesn't necessarily have to be a GoPro brand, but you want something that costs more than 10 pounds on eBay. Yeah. And yeah. then what you do is you strap that to a chassis, not the roof of a car, because it needs to be short enough. I, Okay, John keeps pointing at us. I'm gonna stop Mr. Weber's share here. We're gonna we're gonna highlight John so he can tell us all about whatever he's got. Oh, uh, this is made uh, specifically for my GoPro. Um, I just put two blocks. In. This is a uh, Scalectric's front motor chassis, which everyone yeah. hates. And uh, you you put the GoPro on here. Basically, this it's a twist tie through the chassis, and away you yeah. go. It works absolutely great. Yeah. And you don't even need to go that, you know, if you've got a sidewinder, they usually have plenty of space for a GoPro to sit, throw some blue tack on the chassis, squish the GoPro down on it, hit the start button, and then drive like a snail. Yes. Because you're not going to enjoy any video of any kind of driving speed, any room, anywhere remotely close to going fast around the track. You, you, I would think it would help video. Then they're done that. <laughs> so what? 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 Um, what sort? I mean, say GoPro. Is there millions of different types of GoPro, or do you just go for one? About eight of them. I mean, if you find an older one, like I have a Hero Three, which is like the third version of the GoPro camera. It still takes great video, perfect for this kind of thing. You, you don't need all the all the super fancy features that the people strapping them to their heads on a mountain bike ride need, you know, the, the, even the, the, the older versions are, have stabilization and stuff like that. And they've got very high quality video, very high frame rates, very high resolution, etc. Uh, <clears throat> more than enough. So if you find, you know, an old hero three, four, five, six, whatever, you know, and, and if, and if you don't want to pay GoPro prices because it is a name brand, you know, Porsche, okay. uh, just look for action camera and, and don't spend, if it's a brand new thing, don't spend less than 50 bucks for sure. Because honestly, I'd say 100 or 100 ish would probably get you a good camera. Unless it's GoPro brand, you know, new yeah. old stock or, or somebody's camera they're selling on Marketplace or something like that. As long as it still works. Yeah, perfectly functional solution. I mean, so most of the slotted chassis are nice and flat and low anyway, so yeah. that would be a good, yeah. good platform. Yeah. You've got dozens of, of cars that would be perfect. Just, yeah. You don't even have to do any modifications. Like I said, just take, no, the, body just take off, the body off. Blue tack it down, you're good. Yeah. And it should be pretty I, low enough to go That's on one there. thing I'd love to do is have a driver's eye view of going around my track. Because like Wayne says, some sections... it. It, I mean, say it, it goes up in three sections. So yep. it goes up to a high point where the actual start finish line is, and it starts dropping down into, into different sections. Yep. And um, yeah, it's, it's even, even in front of the uh, driver's bit, it, it goes down and comes back up again. Yeah. One, one of the nice things about GoPro and, and similar cameras is the fisheye lens, the wide angle lens. Because if it's just a normal camera, then you're yeah. looking too far ahead. You're not you're not getting to appreciate the things that are close up. Yeah. You get a wide angle action camera, and you can actually see the track and see the sides and and you know a little bit of ahead of you, not directly to the side, yeah. but it's it's you get a more of a, an immersive sense of the track when you've got that wide angle, and then you yeah. know point it down a little bit so you don't have you know half of your video is ceiling. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. All right, Greg. And then we do. What's that? You do then just download that into your into your laptop and then yeah, yeah. Here's, an, here's an example. Again. That's a used camera. The the hero like Greg has sixty bucks. That's from a very reputable uh, dealer that I've dealt with before. So that you can you can get a camera pretty cheap to do what you want yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh right, this this is gonna yeah. be a laugh because I I I've always wanted to do it. I was I was think trying to figure out whether I could do my mobile phone sideways on it, but then I thought no because it's going to hit everything going through that tunnel. It will just destroy the tunnel section going through. Yeah. Well, what Greg said too is true. That the lens on the GoPros are made for that type of thing. They're they're so wide that they're you know a regular camera is not going to do very well doing that, even if you could put it on the camera. Do you, do you fancy trying to give me some live oxygen advice? Um, I've got a digital chip powered right there, and I've got my app open, and my app's not seeing the chip on blue by a Bluetooth. Have you? I've not experienced this. I did it last night successfully to another one, and tonight I can't do it again to a different, to this one. So what what are you actually trying to do? Register it? Or has it no, no, it's not a new one. It's one of I know it's one of the three that I've got in my app, but the Bluetooth connection doesn't appear to be make, making because it doesn't show on the orange, you know, on the launch screen as online. It's online, okay. I know you can't see it here, but last night the one that was one of these three came up because it was on the power supply. Now last night I got us, I left the car on the power track for few seconds and i got the slow blinking red light but that's not happening with this one today okay so you can see the light what happens when you first put the car on the power solid red light no okay. controller okay solid red light and does it stay solid all the time yes indefinitely turn the car around what power it the opposite way just try it I don't think I can. Okay. If if light oh, hang on. I, I can't. Yes, I can do it. I can do it. I've got a different. I can. I can power the rails the opposite way. It's not a power track. It's a. Oh, it's like. It's a box with a piece of. Um, yeah, there's no light at all on that way. Okay, just just making sure. Uh, got a magnet handy. Um, got a motor. Mm, a motor might not be strong enough. Um, come on, traction magnet. Um, no, no, I don't deal in traction magnets. Isn't there a fridge nearby with a bunch stuck to it? I'm upstairs, so I can go and get one. <laughs> but yes, try yes I can go and get one. Yeah, I mean, you want me to hold that on the bottom of the? You want me to send you some magnets? <laughs> The, the whole sensor isn't installed. Oh, you'll need that then. Okay, so I did it yesterday on this one, and the whole sensor isn't installed. I'm not saying it's, it should be required for the chip to function. I'm saying for what we're going to do, we need it. Yeah, I've seen it done. It's where you hold a magnet on the whole sensor yeah. and then power it, yes. And you, can do it after the chip. you can do it You don't have to power it while it's over the whole sensor. If you put the car on your power and then wave the magnet over the hall sensor. If the light goes out, then you put it into DFU mode. If the light doesn't go out, yeah. then turn, turn the magnet over and try again. Because okay. as soon as the hall sensor gets the right polarity, it'll, it'll put the chip into DFU mode. And then you can try flashing it and see if that fixes the problem. OK, what I need to do is put the hall sensor on then. Yeah. I've got one. It'll take me a few minutes. Right, Greg, yep. I've just found a 4K action camera with built-in Wi-Fi GoPro, $39.99 each over here. And it's what it looks like. Okay, hold on. Let me move the spotlight here so I can see what that is. <clears throat> is that the one? Yeah, so it's basically an, it's an off-brand. But the GoPros, are, the GoPro 4 and the 3 are going for the same price anyway. So, but that, but they're using one. GoPro, but they're using GoPro as a search term. It's not yeah. an actual brand, yeah. GoPro brand. No, but that, that one there. There you go. That's is. what I have. Okay. That's what you got. Then I'll get one of them. That's exactly what I got. I right. feel from that. <laughs> I wish I could have got that for thirty pound. <laughs> I tell you right, there, there, there are as loads as there's one there. 
for 19 quid. And, and that's why Jim specifically sent, <laughs> showed a link for a, a, a reputable, a place that he has bought from before. Yeah. Like, I'd be wary of, of, no, they're, they're, this think, one, think, think, of, think of what people use these things for. Yeah. Underwater action. Yeah. BMX. They get beat the crap out of. So, yeah, yeah be, be wary. Well, this one's they're good little cameras, but they're not in struggle. Well, this, one's, this one's a proper shop, this one. And this is £31 as well. There you go. It's not, it's not from a Nigerian prince selling it? No. No. Okay. You don't I mean, have to. Uh, you, you don't claim the million in, pound price. I think some guy in Iowa selling it. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or worse, a, or worse, a former British prince who is now a king. <laughs> yeah. At the at the very least, make sure that you pay with something that has some kind of buyer protection, like yeah. PayPal. I, I always service. PayPal anyway. Everything I buy goes through PayPal. Yeah, as as long as you yeah. do it as a goods and services, and not friends and family. Then no. No. No, never friends and family. Yeah, you might pay a little extra going to an actual camera store, but it may be worth it too. Yeah. Like I said, that the one that I showed is a is a very reputable place that I've bought and sold from before in, in Indianapolis. Um and so you know, something like that in your area, whatever. I just want to see what it's like to go through it, go go around and get the footage. I have an update. I've put the whole sensor in. I now have the car on the power track without its light lit because I put a magnet over it. You're going to have to be quiet now. No. Put your headphones on, Wayne. Yeah, you've been told. <laughs> now, now, now it should be in, in emergency DFU mode, so you should be able to fire up the, the Nordic DFU app on your device and push some fresh firmware in there. Oh. DFU, Nordic. Yep. The thing is, I haven't got the zip file without getting it via the um, slotted app, have I? Uh, you can download it from the slotted website on your phone. <laughs> so it's a bit of a hassle. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah. Uh, I have but... got, I have had a zip file of, but it's not the latest. Just put anything yeah. in there. I can drive the car. I've had the power on, uh, and I've had the controller on, and I can drive the car. What I'm trying to do is get the latest on there. Do you, do you remember what firmware was in there? No, I don't remember, because okay. I haven't connected to it. But you said it's registered. Oh, it's registered. I've got the three. I've got the three chips registered. I just don't know which one of the three it is. I don't. I know which one it isn't, but the, that still leaves two. So, so if I press other... one of them and press info, I've got three fifteen B on one, and the other one, according to this, has also got three fifteen B. Make sure the device is in app BT mode. Rotating circle. Right, guys. I'm going to love you and leave you. Device not found. Beautiful. That's because the chip's in, in DFU mode. It's not in app mode. Yeah, okay. So so go ahead and, and you know, t turn your power off and on again and, and don't use the magnet. And maybe it'll decide to talk. If that's Does it need to possible. be in the slow blinking configuration to be able to connect via Bluetooth? Yeah, and, and I can't imagine that you'd be doing this but make sure your controller is turned off. No, it's off. Okay, good. I tried it with it on as well, but it's off. Yeah, that won't work. Of course, as soon as you out. put the controller on, it goes into a fast blink, which means you're connected. Correct. So you can't do the app while the controller is on. That's why I was making sure. But yeah, yeah the fact that the light is steady and, and doesn't Stop. switch to blinking is strange. That's what's different about this one compared to the one I was doing last night. Yeah. Are these B chips or C chips? C chips. That's C kind chip. of what I figured since we're talking about the app, anyways. Right. I'm going. I'll see you. You said later. that already, Paul. Bye. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> oh, oh, no, you, so you don't want the part then. Okay, fine. Oh.
we'll say bye to everybody. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go stop the live, but we're not gonna we're not gonna stop chatting. So everybody, wave bye for next week. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.